The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. You're not going to need this for the next 30 minutes. Second law of thermodynamics? What was the first law? I don't know. Hey, welcome to Sports Figures. On ESPN2. Where sports and science go one-on-one. -on -one. Where physics get physical. Where math gets mathematical. Where sports figure. Go figure. It's Sports Figures. is just not having a good day out there. He just can't seem to keep his feet under him. Hey man, you want to come down here and try this? Uh, no. You're you're um you're you're doing just fine. Man, everybody wants to be a coach. Jerome is reading what seems to be a physics book. Can I get some quiet time down here? I'm trying to find my center. Oh, uh, sorry. center of gravity. Everybody knows you've got to be physical to play football, but how many of you know that physics plays a big part in the game too? Why? Let's find out. This guy would make a pretty good running back. Why? Because he's hard to knock down. That's because he has a low center of gravity. Of course, he's, uh, he's not much in the running department. You want a piece of me? Let's say I had to pick a running back between these two. I'd pick her. Why? Same reason, a lower center of gravity, and she's a touch cuter. Oh, damn. Oh, oh no. shoot. So, uh, what's a center of gravity, and how does it help a running back? <laughs> To help us figure things out today, we've asked Jerome Bettis of the Pittsburgh Steelers to join us. Now, Jerome was not only Rookie of the Year, but he was also a two-time All-Pro, so I think he knows a thing or two about running backs. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Greg. Uh, what can you tell us about the center of gravity? Jerome? Now, we all know what gravity is, a force that pulls down. Here you go. Oh. Oh my God, sorry about that. Now, every single thing on this planet is always being pulled down by gravity. And here you go, oh! Now that's the force of gravity. Sorry about that. When something falls, it's because the force of gravity isn't being balanced out. When you're standing on something, the force of gravity pulling down is balanced out by the force of whatever you're standing on pushing back up. If she jumps, there's nothing to balance out the pull of gravity until she hits the ground. Now the ground is pushing back up to balance out the force of gravity. So when something falls, oh, 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 it's because the forces are out of balance. Oh. There's another way to balance out forces. One we think of more often when we say balance. If I balance an object like this, we find the center of gravity. Objects balance at their center of gravity. 
Now, the weight on this side of the board is trying to spin the board counterclockwise. And the weight on this side of the board is trying to spin the board clockwise. Because the forces are balanced and opposing, nothing moves. Voila! Now, if we add some weight to one side of the board, the forces will go out of balance. Now, it may look like the board is falling one way, but what it's really doing is spinning. Because the forces are unbalanced, the board spins one way. We call that spin torque. Torque is what happens when the forces are out of balance, and torque makes things twist. And torque also has everything to do with what makes a good running back. As you might expect, the center of gravity inside a ball is right in the center. But if that center is hollow, the center of gravity is still inside even if there is nothing there. Like the center of gravity of a donut is here, in the center of the hole. You can find the center of gravity for any flat object, even if it has an irregular shape. Like the uh, ugh, state of New York. First you suspend the object, oh, thank you, from a point where it will balance, or until there's no torque. Then you draw a line straight down from that point. Next, you find another point on the object where it will balance, like so, voila. And then you draw a line straight down from that point. Where the two lines intersect is the center of gravity. Right about here in Unadilla Forks, okay. Now, I can prove what I'm talking about, thank you, by sticking a pin into Unadilla Forks, ah, and spinning the state of New York. See? Balance. OK, Greg, I'm with you so far. When forces balance out, it's the center of gravity. And when they're out of balance, it creates torque. Right. But I don't get how this relates to being a good running back. Well, stability has everything to do with center of gravity. And when you're a running back in the NFL, like Jerome Bettis, you have to be stable on your feet, right? Right. All right, let's check it out. Here we have two bricks. The red dots mark their center of gravity. Now, if I wanted to tip this brick over, I would have to apply this much torque to move the center of gravity far enough for it to tip over. But if I wanted to tip this brick over, I would only have to apply this much torque to get it to tip over. See the difference? The brick with the lower center of gravity took four or five times as much torque to get it to tip over. Now look at this guy. His center of gravity is way down here. Center of gravity has everything to do with stability. You're a really happy guy, aren't you? I think I see where this all comes together. If you have a low center of gravity, you're harder to tackle. Exactly, Drum. Now let's go find the secret to your success. Huh? His center of gravity. Oh, okay. Okay, to find Jerome's center of gravity, we're gonna balance him, or at least we're gonna try to, just like the board. All right, okay, how does that feel? Silly. Okay, great. Now, that right there, that is the secret to a great running back. A nice, low center of gravity. So that's where it is. Let's take a look at it in action. When Jerome cuts to the outside, look what happens. His body leans. The force down from gravity and force up from the ground are out of alignment. Jerome's center of gravity is now this much out of balance, causing a torque that wants to tip him over. But if Jerome were a foot taller, his center of gravity would be higher and that much further out of alignment. Look at how much more torque there would be. If a defensive back hit him now, it wouldn't take much to knock him over. That stability is what keeps a great running back like Jerome Bettis on his feet during those very quick maneuvers. There he goes. It's also what makes it hard for the defensive players to tackle him. You have to apply a lot of torque to get Jerome's center of gravity so far out of balance that he's going to fall. 
But let's say Jerome tried to run like this with Melissa on his shoulders. The center of gravity would be much higher. That's right. You'd probably balance out right about here. So if I lean to one side even a little bit, my forces would be way off balance. Exactly. You'd probably be a heck of a lot easier to tip over. Whoa. <laughs> Physics and football. Get him! Whoa! Okay, Jerome, so what other ways can a running back, like yourself, use their center of gravity? Well, you know, right before you're getting tackled, you can crouch down and get low and, and use your center of gravity to, uh, to break a tackle. Okay, so I guess most running backs in the NFL must be pretty short. I guess so. I guess if you were pretty big, you'd crash like a tree. So it's true. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. Whoa! Uh, because the taller a player, the higher his center of gravity, the easier it is to topple him over. Whoa! So that's it. I'd like to thank Nikki, Melissa, Jen, Charis, Dave, and Len from Penn Hill High School for helping us out today. Whoa! Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank Jerome Bettis of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, man. I've got to get my center of gravity checked out. Ow. You get that last part? I think so. You forgot to carry the two. Hey, cut that <laughs> out. Your own paper. Quit cheating. That's it for today on ESPN2 Sports Figures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. On ESPN2 Sports Figures. Going. <laughs> well, I guess we won't be needing this anymore. We're done. You want it back? All right. You can have this back now. Thanks for watching. Go! It's over! ESPN2 Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to record and use. Curriculum guides are available to help integrate sports figures into your classroom. For more information, call your local cable system or cable in the classroom at 1-800-743-5355. You can also access Sports Figures lesson plans by connecting to the ESPN Net Sports Zone at the internet address on your screen. ESPN2 Sports Figures makes math and physics a ball. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company.